With the increasing probability of AI taking all of our jobs and just taking over the entire world, learning AI is becoming one of the most important things you can do. Most people, when they teach AI, will just spam through tons of PowerPoint slides and rattle off a huge number of definitions. But the issue with this is we all just forget everything they told us after a couple hours. So instead, what I've done to learn AI is mind map it and understand the background logic and relationships in the entire field of AI. And in this video, I'm going to teach you that mind map. And this will allow you to actually understand this information, but more importantly, actually remember what the hell AI or machine learning or deep learning or large language models even are and how they all fit into the bigger picture. So let's dive in. The first step in understanding artificial intelligence is understanding that it's a subset of the overarching realm of data science. Data science is this idea of how do we extract and then subsequently apply insights from data. Because pretty much everything in the world around us is really just data. And it's all about how do we analyze and use that data. One way that we can actually analyze and utilize data is to create an artificial intelligence model. And then once we've created artificial intelligence, we can then use it as a tool to analyze more data. But this idea of artificial intelligence is actually pretty simple. It's kind of all encapsulated in the name. It is our attempt at making an intelligent system artificially, an intelligent machine. And there's two overarching ways we can make an intelligent machine. We can either try and emulate human intelligence, effectively feed in human logic and knowledge into this machine and instruct the machine on how to use that logic and that knowledge. And this is what we call symbolic AI. It's also known as good old fashioned AI. These are the really, really simple AIs that you've likely experienced back in the day when you saw some really basic chatbots. It's effectively the equivalent of like a BuzzFeed quiz, where one example of this is a simple rules-based system, where if X happens, then do Y. Although it may not sound that intelligent, it's still mimicking some level of intelligence. And the reason why it's called symbolic AI is because, well, it's built off human logic and human knowledge. And so it's sourced from humans. And so we use human understandable symbols, aka words, numbers, or equations in symbolic AI. It's built off human understandable symbols. And that's why we call it symbolic AI. The second kind of AI is one that is a little bit more interesting. And instead of trying to emulate human intelligence, it tries to emerge intelligence from the interaction or combination of very, very simple subunits. And that might sound very weird to try and emerge intelligence from simple things, but that's effectively what all current intelligence does. If you think about any organism or human intelligence, it stems from very simple interactions. As for humans, our intelligence stems from just simple neural interactions, where a neuron just fires an electrical signal and activates another neuron, which in isolation is an incredibly simple process. But when you combine all of the neurons in our brain, we get human level intelligence. And so computer scientists have tried to emulate this idea of emerging intelligence from the interactional combination of simple subunits. And since it's emerging from very simple things, it's usually not actually very easy for a human to understand what's going on. Because unlike symbolic AI, where a human can effectively read the logic, in this kind of AI, it's not very easy to understand. And so we call it sub-symbolic. The easiest way to understand the emergence of this intelligence is just to look at the subtypes of sub-symbolic AI. The first one is when we emerge as an intelligence from the interaction of groups of simple agents, small units which are independent of each other. And these are what we call swarms. A simple example of a swarm in biological life are ants, where an ant colony is comprised of lots of very small, simple organisms, individual ants, which follow very, very simple rules. They don't actually think that much for themselves. However, the combination of lots and lots of very simple ants 
can actually do very complicated tasks. And one very simple example of this is when ants are trying to find food. So if we have an ant nest up here, the ants will randomly go out and try and find food. And they'll go around various obstacles and eventually find themselves different food sources. Once they've found a food source, they'll then go back the way they came and release pheromones as they return to the nest, which tells other ants that there's food in that direction and causes them to follow that path. And because of this, what's going to happen is on this path here on the left, as you can see, it's a shorter path than the path here on the right. And so although ants will be releasing pheromones as they go back on both paths, because this bath is shorter, it's actually going to take less time for the ants to go back and forth and back and forth. And so they're going to end up releasing more and more pheromones because there's more ants going back and forth more quickly. And so then this is going to strengthen the pheromone track of this path, causing more ants to travel it. And that's going to end up being a loop where more and more ants will go down this path. And so effectively what's happening here is because this path is shortest, there's going to be a greater release of pheromones, and so more ants are going to travel down until eventually the ants only travel in that direction. And so what's happened here is these very simple organisms, these ants, have been able to find the shortest path between two points, which is actually a very hard thing to do. And so very simple organisms have been able to do a very intelligent thing. And so the sum of the interaction has become intelligent. And this is what we call swarm intelligence. And this is the first kind of AI where we, we mimic this with machines. We get very simple machines that follow a very simple set of rules. And then the culmination of how they interact can result in intelligent behavior. The second kind is also inspired by biology, where it's a kind of intelligence that stems through mimicking evolution. Because just like in evolution, intelligent creatures have resulted from very, very simple rules. Just through the pure repetition of selection and variation, through just mutation and natural selection, we've slowly been able to develop very, very complex organisms. And so we can do a similar process when it comes to machines, where if we have a given solution that we want to find, we can come up with various solutions. We can then select the best solutions using some sort of evaluation criteria. We can then variate those solutions and cycle back and forth through that process until we come to a great solution. And so this very, very simple process can result in a very intelligent solution. And so it's that emergence of that intelligent solution from simple subunits or simple processes. And the final type of sub-symbolic AI, which is arguably the most important in the field of AI, and specifically these days, is machine learning. And machine learning is when it emerges this intelligent behavior through learning from data. And so unlike the other two where they're mimicking processes, this is learning from data. And within the topic of machine learning, there are four different ways that a machine can learn from data. The first is supervised learning. This is when it's learning from labeled data. You've had a, say, human expert come in and label all of this data. Maybe there's tons of pictures of apples and oranges, and they progressively said, all right, this is an apple, this is an orange. And then you feed that into an AI model, and it learns what is an apple and what is an orange. And so it's learning through labeled data where it's being supervised effectively by this human expert, sort of guiding it on what is what. However, this AI can also learn without the supervision of a human. You can just feed it data that has no labels, just random photos of, say, apples and oranges, but it has no clue what is an apple and what is an orange because no one's labeled it. And then it can actually learn its own patterns from this information. And then you can use these patterns to do various things. And so it's completely unsupervised. There's no human actually labeling what is what to teach the AI. So supervised learning is almost like having a tutor or like a mentor, whereas unsupervised learning is effectively just throwing you out into the wild and seeing what you figure out. And then the one in between is semi-supervised, where you give it some labeled data and some unlabeled data. So it learns a couple of patterns on its own, but then you can also say reinforce the patterns that you want it to communicate. And then the final category is reinforcement learning. And so this occurs when you have a very clear goal. Say you want a robot to open a door. You can effectively train this AI by getting it to continuously attempt this goal and then seeing how close it gets to actually completing it. 
And so it's constantly getting this feedback, this reinforcement on how it's going because it has a clear goal and it's seeing how close it is to achieving it. And so it can constantly iterate on itself until it can actually accomplish this goal. And so it's learning through being reinforced as to how well it's doing to accomplish its given goal. And so those are the four ways a machine can learn from data. And in all of these methods, there are various different AI models that we can produce. They can be incredibly simple from things like linear regression, but they can also become a lot more complicated. And one more complicated technique that is becoming increasingly popular and is behind some of the most breakthrough discoveries and usefulness of AI today is what we call deep learning. And deep learning is when instead of just letting this AI learn in any way from data, we try and get it to mimic the way a human would learn. And we effectively mimic the neural networks in our brain using machines. And so this sort of links back to this idea where in a lot of sub-symbolic AI, we're getting inspired by biology. We're looking at life. And we saw that when we had swarm intelligence and evolutionary computation. And this is another example where within machine learning, we can get inspired by how humans learn through neural networks and try and mimic that in machines. And so this is this concept of deep learning, which can be applied to any of these four different methods of learning. And then through deep learning, we can form what we call foundation models, which are just really, really big models where they've learned on huge amounts of data and can do a broad range of tasks. And these are the things that you've probably been interacting with when you're using ChatGPT, because this is what we call a large language model. It's a foundation model, a huge model with huge data that is built off language, a large language model. With a larger sort of indicative of saying that it's a foundation model, it's a huge model, and then it's a language model in particular. But we can also have models which are trained on visual images, and these are what we call computer vision, where maybe they're trained on images or video. And so these are the things like you might have seen like Sora or various AI image generators. So I've now given you a quick overview of the entirety of the field of AI, but please note that I've missed a lot of detail. The field of AI is huge and I've just sort of scraped the surface to help you get a little bit of a big picture understanding. And to summarize that, we can think of it as this core flow, where we start with data science, the science of extracting and applying insights from data. And then we can use that to create something that is intelligent artificially. And to make something that's intelligent artificially, you can either emulate human intelligence with symbolic AI or emerge that intelligence from very simple subunits with sub-symbolic AI. With sub-symbolic AI, there are three ways we can emerge that intelligence. We can mimic the intelligent behaviors of swarms, where it's the combination of the actions of tons of small independent agents. We can also mimic the process of evolution to try and evolve intelligent solutions. And then finally, we can get machines to learn from data. And it can learn from data in four different ways, either supervised by a human with labeling data, unsupervised with unlabeled data, or a mix of both with semi-supervised and finally reinforcement. And with all of these categories, we can actually use a more advanced method of learning that mimics the human brain with neural networks called deep learning. And when the deep learning, we can then form these big, big models based on tons of data called foundational models. And two examples of those are large language models and computer vision. And these are the things which we've been interacting with, with things like ChatGPT and DALI 3. That's a big overview. If you're interested in diving into more detail into some of these topics, please watch out for some of my future videos. And if you want to look into how I actually learned AI to make this mind map, you can watch my previous video where I talk about my three-step strategic process to learn AI quickly. But I hope you enjoyed. And if you're interested in more content like this, feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, have a great day.